The fourth video on Laplace gives a few extra rules and observations that may prove useful. We've already stated that Laplace transforms are a useful tool for linear systems analysis and design. And the first three videos have given the most common transforms and rules that you're likely to need most of the time. The purpose of this video is just to give a number of additional specific cases that may come up occasionally and therefore it's worth being aware of them just in case you come across them. A reminder of how we're doing these videos, we're always starting from the definition for a Laplace transform and I'll emphasize that again, this is a definition, it's not something to understand, you just take it as given. First then, let's look at transforms of intercourse. The previous video looked at transforms of derivatives and you might be therefore asking, well, what happens if I have an integral? Here, I've defined f of t equals dg dt, or alternatively, you could view g as being the integral of f. So what would happen if I said to you, I want to know the Laplace of the integral of f? That would be equivalent to saying what's the Laplace of g of t, and here I'll just assume that's g of s. Now let's go back to this particular statement here. Equivalently, f of t is given as dg dt. So if the Laplace of f is equal to the Laplace of dg dt, that's telling me that f of s must be equal to s g of s, and I'm ignoring initial conditions, obviously. I also know that the Laplace of the integral of f of t has got to be the same as the Laplace of g of t, which is g of s, and from this statement up here, g of s is f of s over s. And so what you will see, if that's gone a bit quick for you, is Laplace of the integral of f of t is given by f of s over s. And that's ignoring initial conditions. So if you integrate something, then you can find the Laplace of the integral simply by dividing by s. Now what does this tell us? This 1 over s term actually has two different functions. We saw in the first few videos that 1 over s represents a unit step signal or a constant. Equivalently, it actually represents the operation of integration. So you need to be careful with Laplace when you see 1 over s to understand clearly what is it doing and that depends upon the context. You will notice if you uh, go and do a lot more control that the use of 1 over s as an integration operation is very common indeed. A question then, just to reinforce this, find the Laplace transform of the following integral. So I've got the integral between 0 and t, t e to the minus ft dt. And you might think, golly, to find the Laplace transform of that looks a bit of a mess. However, I know from the first three videos that the Laplace of t e to the minus 5t is given as 1 over s plus 5 squared. And I also know that if I want the Laplace of an integral, I just multiply by 1 over s. And so you will see, I just put the result down by inspection, 1 over s times s plus 5 squared. Next topic that might come up from time to time is delays. Now, delays are common in real processes, especially chemical processes. And this could be because you've got slow measurement for whatever reason, or you might have a transport delay down a pipe, and there can be many other reasons as well. This figure demonstrates what a delay might look like. You could imagine that the input signal was entered at time t equals zero, but the output doesn't appear to respond until much later on. So there is delayed response. And the question you might ask then is, how do I deal with the Laplace transform of a signal something like this? Well, there's a very simple secret. You will notice that if you've got a delayed signal, then the output is zero for small positive values of time. I've demonstrated that here by saying y of t is zero for t less than two, for this particular signal, I've done e to the minus 0.4, t minus 2. So I've said the value is 0 for small values of time, and then you're OK for t greater than or equal to. Now, if you want to find the Laplace transform of something like this, the easiest way to do it is to change the integration variable from t to t minus 2. And we'll show on the next slide how you might do that. 
So here's a very specific example. I want to find Laplace of e to the minus 0.4 t minus 2, where I've assumed that the signal is 0 if t is less than 2. And therefore, here's the key point. You notice I've changed this integration limit to be 2 because I know that the signal is 0 for less than 2. So there's no point integrating from 0 to infinity. I might as well do it from 2 to infinity. But otherwise, you'll see this is the standard definition for a Laplace transform. So the integral here between 2 and infinity, and then I've got the signal f of t, e to the minus st dt. Now what I'm going to do next is do a variable transform. I'm going to define a new variable tor as t minus 2, and therefore dt d tor is 1. Hopefully that's straightforward. If t equals 2, then tor is naught. If t is infinite, then tor is infinite. So if I do this variable substitution, my integral is going to change to become the following one here. You'll see I now get the integral between naught and infinity. That's because of those two limits there. I get e to the minus 0.4 tor instead of e to the minus 0.4 t minus 2. And I get an e to the minus s tor plus 2 and then d tor. Next, what I'm going to do is say, OK, I've got an additional 2s in here. So I'm going to separate that out. You see, I'm going to write e to the minus 2s. Take it outside the integral, because the integral is based on tor, so s doesn't change it. And then I get the integral between 0 and infinity, e to the minus 0.4 tor, e to the minus s tor, d tor. And you will notice this is a standard Laplace transform, as we did in video 1 for an exponential. And it's 1 over s plus 0.4. So if I then put the bit that's outside the integral back in, you end up with e to the minus 2s over s plus 0.4. Or if you preferred, I could have written e to the minus 2s into 1 over s plus 0.4. So you can see what's happened. By delaying this signal by two seconds, the transform has changed by having a multiplying factor of e to the minus 2s. In general terms, you can derive this for any signal. So what you'll find is that if Laplace of f of t is f of s, then Laplace of f of t minus t0 for an arbitrary delay t0 is given by this formula. You simply put an e to the minus t0 outside the f of s. So you can recognize delays because the transform includes this e to the minus s t term. Impulse function. So a unit impulse is something that has a finite area, or energy if you like, but occurs essentially instantaneously. And the way some people explain it is they say, think of it as the limiting case of a rectangle. And I can draw a rectangle for you here. So here's, here's the rectangle. And you can see it's got height A and width D. But what we're going to do is we're going to assume that AD is 1. So the area of the rectangle is fixed. But we're going to let the width tend to zero. So you've got a finite area, but a vanishingly small width. Now this can be a useful mathematical tool at times. I like to think of it as like hitting something with a hammer. So you transfer a finite amount of momentum, but essentially in almost instantaneously. Now if you try and find the Laplace transform of this, then because you're doing an integral here, and because delta t has got a finite area, essentially you find the area at the given time. You'll notice the delta t is 0 all times apart from t equal to 0. And so when you solve that, you end up with the Laplace transform is 1. So if you get a Laplace transform, which is just a simple number, that corresponds to an impulse function. So in summary, then, what have we covered in these videos? We've covered the Laplace of derivatives. And they were the formulas given in 3. And you notice differentiation is essentially equivalent to multiplying by s. Sometimes you'll need the initial condition. But in control, people will often ignore the initial conditions. We've given some properties. So superposition, the Laplace of a sum is the sum of the Laplace. The shift property, if you multiply by an exponential, then the Laplace of this is basically you change wherever you had s to s plus a. If you want to do an integral, you divide by s. If you have a delay, you multiply by e to the minus s t0. If you want to scale by t, you have this funny formula down here. And common signals that you'll come across, constants, ramps, 
exponential sine, cosine, and exponential times sine and cosine. And these are the basic things you need to be familiar with for the common topics you'll come across in engineering. Now, just a remark, the harder topic and the bigger topic is in fact inverse Laplace and you'll find there's a separate series of videos looking at inverse Laplace and this is in the chapter on linear system response and analysis.